All right, welcome back. So, so far we've been interested in finding the accumulation of a deposit over time, but now we wanna look at this from a slightly different angle. Instead of looking at the accumulation, now we're interested in how much should we deposit now in order to accumulate a certain amount in the future. And so what do I mean by that? Well, if you remember back to the very beginning where we learned that the future value of a deposit is equal to that deposit times one plus the interest rate to the power of the number of periods, at least if it was common compound interest. But what if we wanted to know instead of a value in the future, how much we should deposit today, meaning this value right here. Well, you remember we have that alternate equation up here where we have the accumulation at times t is equal to the accumulation at times zero or that initial deposit times the accumulation factor where that accumulation factor is the same thing as this but just written differently with a variable of t, right? One plus i to the t power. Well, we can rewrite this equation to represent a present value or the value today that we need to deposit to get a particular value in the future. And so what do I mean by that? Let's take this equation and solve for this initial deposit value. So if I solve for that, we would divide both sides by our accumulation factor. So we'll have the accumulation at time t divided by the accumulation factor is equal to that initial deposit at time equals zero. And then we can rewrite this to be the accumulation at time zero is equal to the accumulation at time t times one over that accumulation factor, which I'm now going to change to this, one plus i to the t power. And so what is this? This is an equation that if I know an amount in a future that I want to have, and I know my interest rate, and I know how far in the future that I want to have that amount, I can find how much I need to deposit today, which would be my present value. Except when we use the present value formula, which is this right here, we typically write it in a different way. And for starters, we like to represent this part of the formula with some different notation. We will actually write this as v sub i, the interest rate to the amount of years t. And we call this our present value factor. Additionally, we will change the capital letter A here to P to represent present value rather than accumulation, just to kind of keep them different so we don't get this formula mixed up with this one. So what does that look like? Well, it'll look like the present value at time equals zero. Sometimes I will also write this as present value, but I'm not gonna use that for this lesson. I might do that in some of our examples later on though. But for now, let's just do P of zero is equal to the value at a time T times the present value factor. And so this will be our present value formula. Before we had our accumulation formula or our future value formula, this is going to be our present value. And its function is to tell us how much to deposit today if we know how much we want and in what time we want that in, given that we also know our interest rate. And a quick note, typically you won't see this I written here for this present value factor unless there are multiple interest rates being thrown around in a particular problem. You will typically just see V to the number of periods T. But remember that this still will equal this expression right here, one over that accumulation factor. And so let's learn how to use this formula by looking at an example. So for our example, let's say that I wanted to have a thousand dollars after five years in an account that is going to earn 3% interest, right? Which means that our I is going to equal 0 0.03. And that is going to be a yearly compounded rate. The question is how much do I need to deposit today to accumulate up to this $1,000, right? This is going to be our present value at some time in the future, specifically t equals five. Well, let's pull out our present value formula. We said that the present value is going to be equal to the present value at a time in the future times our present value factor. So now let's plug in what we know and then we will evaluate this. So this is going to be equal to $1,000 times our present value factor, which we know is going to be one over the accumulation factor, which is one plus i to the t power. But in this case, we know those variables, so we can write 1,000 times one over one plus 0.03, so 1.03 to the five years power, so five. And then if we were to plug this into our calculator, a thousand times this expression, we will find that this is equal to $862.61.
And so what does that mean? This means that if we deposit $862.61 today, that we will have $1,000 in our account in five years, assuming that we have this 3% compound interest rate every year. Now, let's say that you wanted to check this, right? Because we could reverse this and we could check our work by using our future value formula. We could say, well, if this is my initial deposit, how much am I going to have in five years if I have that 3% compound interest rate? And so we're gonna do that next. I want to show you that this will give us that $1,000 in five years. Okay, so remember, we found that the present value is equal to $862.61. So if we set up our future value equation, right? If we said the future value is equal to that initial deposit times one plus the interest rate, to the amount of periods n, then we will have this initial deposit of $862.61 times one plus our interest rate, that is 0 0.03, to the amount of years, right, which is five. If we plug this into our calculator, we will get $1,000. And I would encourage that you check this in your calculator to make sure that that is true just like I am saying that it is. And this should make sense because when we derived our present value formula, we started with our future value formula. We just switched things around and redefined them. So really it's not a new formula per se, it's just a different way to define that formula. Instead of solving for a value in the future, we are solving for a value today. And it's going to be very important for you to distinguish between when we are looking for a value today rather than a value in the future or an accumulation. And so now this brings us to our final example for this video, where we will also discuss the equation of value, which is the other part of this lesson. Okay, so here is our second example. We have how much should you deposit today in an account earning 4% compounded annually so that you are paid $1,000 in two years and another $1,500 in four years. So our question here is how much should you deposit today? That is a big indicator that we are looking at the present value and not a future value. If it said how much will you accumulate, that would be the future value. But we're looking at how much today. So that is a present value equation. Now, I already have our timeline drawn here, and that's something that I always recommend you do when working with problems that deal with multiple transactions for both present value and future value scenarios. And in this case, we're looking at four years total, right? We're not looking at anything past four years, so we can stop our timeline at four years. In fact, I will now label this timeline. So at the end here, we have time equals zero or the present day. Then we have time equals one or one year in the future. Time equals two, two years in the future, and then three and four. And so since we know that we are looking for how much we should deposit today, we know that we are looking for the present value at time equals zero. And then we know that we want to have $1,000 or we want to be paid $1,000 in two years. So we'll have 1,000 here at the two year mark. And then we wanna be paid $1,500 at the four year mark in four years. So we'll have 1,500 there. And so now where does the equation of value come into play here? What even is the equation of value? Well, the equation of value is how we balance our cash flows. It's all about thinking about our timeline and where we are located within it. And so this is going to involve both accumulation or future values and present values. And so the equation of value boils down to the fact that we can solve problems like this in many different ways. There are many different ways to set up an equation to solve for this present value. And so let me show you what I mean. Firstly, I'll show you the way that I would recommend that we do this problem. And then I'll show you the other ways that you could set this up in case maybe those make more sense to you. So we'll have that the present value is going to be equal to what, right? What are we going to set this equal to? Well, let's quickly recall our present value formula, right? We have the present value is equal to the value at a certain time in the future times our present value factor. And so just like when we looked at basic cash flows with future value, where we were looking at how if we made a deposit or we took some money out, we could string together different accumulations, we can do the same thing with present value. So if we want to be paid $1,000 in two years, right, two years in the future, we could use this formula and write 1,000 times our present value factor for two years. So what this means is that, let's for a second forget about this year four amount. If we just wanted to know 
how much to deposit today to then have a thousand dollars in two years, this would be how we'd set that up. And then of course, we'd have to make note of our 4% compound annual interest rate. In fact, let me just write that up here real quick. Our I is equal to 0 0.04. And that is a yearly compound rate. But then back to our example here with our timeline, we also have that we wanna be paid a separate $1,500 in four years. And so what we can do is we can say we also want $1,500, or we can add $1,500 times the present value factor for four years. So think of these as different cash flows. We want to be paid, we want to earn $1,000 in two years, and then we want to earn $1,500, right, plus 1,500 times the present value factor for four years. And the way I like to think about this is we are taking this amount of money and multiplying it by this present value factor, which would mean that we are bringing it back to the present, right? I like to think of it as bringing it back two years, and then we bring this value back four years to see how much I need to deposit today to receive that payment as well as the other payment that we already took care of. I hope that makes sense. And so this is the way that I would go about solving this problem. We want to know how much to deposit today and we know how much we want to earn in two years and another amount that we want to have in four years. But there's actually another way to set this up and that is where the equation of value comes into play. The equation of value is essentially this but we can change the setup a little bit. Instead of writing it like this, we could say, let's take our present value and bring it forward two years in the future. Now I'll explain why we're doing that in a second, but we could write our accumulation factor, right, for future value of one plus the interest rate to the power of the number of periods, which is two years, and then we'll set this equal to something, but I'll come back to that. What we did is we took our present value, what we were looking at today and made that today two years in the future. So we went from here to here. So now our present value is at two years in the future. And so how does that change the rest of our equation? How does that change this value and this value? Well, now since our present value, so to say, is at the second year on the timeline, this $1,000 here is in the present. So we can just write $1,000 and we don't need any present value factor and we don't need any accumulation factor. So then we can write plus the $1,500 we want, but now this isn't four years in the future anymore. If our present value is at time equals two because we brought it forward two years with our accumulation factor, it's now only two years in the future. So then we would write that our present value factor is V squared because now we have to bring that back two years. I hope that that makes sense. All we did was by multiplying by this accumulation factor for two years, we moved the location of our present value from today to two years in the future. And so that changed our perspective. And really what you can think about this is that we just divided both sides of this equation by V squared. Because remember, if V is equal, VT is equal to one over the accumulation factor, then if we divided both sides by that V squared, it would be the same as multiplying our present value by that accumulation factor in the denominator of our present value factor. And so that's kind of where this would come from. But it's all a matter of perspective and how you wanna set up your equation. If we wanted to, we could have also just moved the present value one year forward, and then we would have had a thousand times V to the first power because it would have been one year in the future from time equals one. And then this one would have been v to the third power because then it would have been three years in the future. So that's really all the equation of value is. It's just the process of setting up these equations. So now let's go through and solve. I'm going to remove this second equation here. So if you want to write that down, you might want to pause the video, but I'm going to erase this. And now let's go through and solve this first equation that I wrote. So our present value will be equal to the $1,000 times the present value factor with one plus our interest rate. So it'd be 1.04, right? 0.04 to the second power, which comes from this exponent here for this V or our present value factor plus 1500 times one over 1.04 to the fourth power, right? And that came from the exponent on this present value factor. So now if I were to plug this into our calculator, a thousand times this present value factor plus 1500 times this present value factor, we would find that our present value is equal to $2,206.76. 
And that would be the answer to this problem. And so what that means is that if we wanted to get paid $1,000 in two years and $1,500 in four years with an interest rate of 4% compounded yearly, we would need to deposit this amount today. That is all that this means. And we could have found this same answer with that other equation I wrote, as well as a multitude of other equations that could be set up with that equation of value idea. But I think in the end, this is the simplest way to write it or to think about it. So I hope all that made sense. This is the last example I had for this lesson. If you wanna see some more examples, I will have an example video linked at the end of this video as well as in the description. In fact, I highly recommend you watch that because there's going to be more complex examples in there that will really test your knowledge of the concept of present value. I really think you're gonna to wanna to see that. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and I will get around to those. But if you don't, that's all I have for now. So I will see you next time. Thank you.